This is what I love about custom case design. We've got some small white workstation-y things that we'll see in a bit. There's a Xeon scalable NAS. Who would want such a thing? And then that thing at the end, I've been told, is a prototype, you know, dual Xeon. But then eight hot swappable drives and four GPUs. Insane. You're not going to get it anywhere else off the shelf, are you? What's your minimum specification? You're in part of a big, big company that needs hundreds of thousands of machines, workstations, just PCs that go on the end of your monitor. You're going to go to somebody like Dell, HP, Lenovo, and they're going to build you something custom. What if you're an individual customer, you just want a simple machine? There are lots of boutique places that will do that for you. But imagine you're a mid-sized company. Exactly what do you do if you want custom builds and you need that sort of 50, 100 units? Maybe you're a video effects studio in London. Maybe you're doing some CAD work for the uh, automotive industry or the airplane industry. This is why you come to companies like Armari here, who this video is sponsored by, to exactly get what you want out of your system. We're going to go through some of the really nice custom builds that they've done for some of their customers, some of which we probably won't be able to tell you about. But just to get an idea of what you can actually order if you know this sort of stuff exists. So joining me today is the CTO of Armari. This is Dan Goldsmith. Say hi, Dan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> He's, he was just showing me uh, a couple of their heat sink projects. The, the, the problem with making heat sinks is they are quite expensive because they're kind of handmade prototypes. So there's about three and a half thousand dollars worth of uh, prototype heat sinks in that stack. It's the leaning tower of copper. <laughs> so here we have Armari set of V20, V25 machines. They sell these as individual units, or you can do a bulk order as a customer. Uh, Dan's kindly showed me through version 1, 2, 3, and version 1 has some nice, you know, kind of Radeon Pro-esque branding. The reason why these machines exist is back when it, we all were doing VR, and some of us are still doing VR, but you have obviously the, uh, the Steam Link VR link down below, you have, you know, removable power supplies, these have to be, you know, thin and efficient and quiet, so server grade only, and uh, the, one of the interesting things here is that you're using a mini ITX board and it's got a custom splitter at the top for three wide PCIe devices. So if you've got a dual slot or a triple slot graphics card or in, uh, as Dan was telling me, some of the customers actually wanted high speed Ethernet. Now these were obviously built at a time when 5 gig, 10 gig didn't really appear on motherboards. So you just add in a card and it does all the cooling for you. And you'll also notice at the front there are some extra buttons which don't actually appear on the other models. These were meant to be uh, uh, custom uh, keyboard controls, you know, so you could do one button macros for those doing VR demos, you know, really back at the height of um, VR. So they've kind of turned into these sort of custom, custom workstation type DDs just because uh, you know, these two are 80 mil wide, this is 85 mil wide. On here, alongside the uh, liquid cooling, we've got a pull-out U.2 slot. Uh, that was when it looked like the market was going U.2 for Optane. Uh, and on the later generations, that's turned into uh, M.2 SATA. And the newer model, right up here, we've gone to an integrated power supply at the back. But uh, that's because, turns out, customers didn't really need removable power supplies. But also, the power supply had to get bigger. We're going from 750 watts to these two, to this one, which is kind of 850 watts because GPUs now consume up to 300 watts and more, if you really, really want to push it. So this is why this one exists. It's actually in a really nice polished white. These are customized cases just by Armari. You know, they've got their partners uh, who, uh, who, who build them elsewhere, but these, these guys design them. And if you think about it, these, this sounds like some of the slimmest, you know, almost mass-produced high-performance machines. Um, so if we ignore these two for a second and just focus on this one, what you've got inside is you've got a 16-core R9 5950X, you know, running maybe slightly overclocked if you really wanted to, alongside 300-watt GPU or a dual slot and some extra networking, or let's do something crazy in there as well. I've had one of these in for testing. Um, <laughs> this is during the prototype stages. And uh, they got the thermals sorted out. 
that was really good. <laughs> Eventually, Dan's nodding. Yes, it's sorted. It's sorted. But this is this looks like it will continue to be one of the mainstays um, of their offering. It's a highly customized, highly performant machine, and uh, you know I think we can all find a place where this might fit in our homes. So another one of the systems that Dan has showed me is is this. This is an intensely ruggedized, passively cooled. Uh, little machine. What they've done here is they've taken stuff out of a nook, put it into a customized chassis, and they've even expanded out the M.2 slot into four different devices, 3G, 4G, GPS, and it's all got to survive the elements because, you know, this sort of stuff you find will get rained on and wind and snow and high temperature, low temperature, so it all has to be bespoke for that operation. This looks kind of cool, it's actually kind of heavy. What sort of other company do you know that has a motherboard in the kitchen? There you go. There's your Asus Z10PD8WS. Right by the coffee. Perfect. That's when you know they mean business. So if you want something with a little bit more horsepower, if you want to get your sort of like Ferrari and Lamborghini on, uh, we've got also the R80 here. You've got it in tower and in rack mount form, 19 inch rank mount. It's 19 inch, it's for you, and so yeah, what, what it is is a compact, rackable workstation. So you can have it, uh, like this version, this is a more conventional, this is a dual scalable version, it's air cooled, um, but it does have this bracket that's on this one where you can actually put a water cooling unit on it. Um, and then we have a, a vented side panel that can go on it if you want a single CPU water cool it. Um, and you simply take the feet off the bottom, put the rack mount panels on, and the logo, so the door has a little logo plate here. Oh, this is great, this is. That you can unscrew and you can rotate it for rack mount mode. And a customer, if, the, if a, let's say a customer wants their own, a studio wants their own branding, yeah. or a, a reseller wants their own branding, you can have your own insert with your own logo on it. Because I know you guys, you play a lot in the VFX space here in the UK and uh, with the nature of work from home they're moving from what used to be on the desk yeah. they don't take them home when they need to work from home they have to put them in the server rack Correct. and they remote work into them so having the same unit they can literally just rotate yeah. put in but then also you know VFX logos, they love promoting themselves, even though it's in a server rack. Yeah. So, so they've got to have their own logo. Absolutely. You just undo a screw at the back, the little plate comes out, and you rotate it 90 degrees. What you can't really see here, and I'll put up some B-roll, is that the power supplies are at the top. Uh, for this one, there's uh, their dual redundant power supplies, but also hot swap bays for storage. Two drive, two two and a half inch bays accessible through the front on drive trays and these can be U.2, NVMe or SATA yeah. and there's two three and a half inch at the back. They can also be converted to take U.2 drives if you want for U.2 drives. And uh, you were telling me that not only do these take active graphics cards, you can also take passive workstation Absolutely. cards. So we You've have... got a custom, is this custom? This is a custom module that we built so that you can put either two or four passive cards. So you can have an active card and a couple of compute cards. And yeah. then obviously for those, what we also find is people use these for GPU rendering. Yeah. Even when you've got like 3090s, four 3090s next to each other, the problem is they struggle keeping them cool. Yeah. So sometimes we actually fit those kits as well to help pull the heat, help the card to pull active the heat cooling, out. yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, the, this is where you get into some serious rendering 3D yeah. output. Yeah. But you also have another system for that. I think we should have a look. Sure. So I know what you're kind of all thinking. This is just modding, right? This is just one-off custom builds. Now, that's the thing. Modders do great work. They will have that one-off system that kind of looks epic, and most modders do it for show. Very few of them do it for utility or do, down to customer requests where they have to build you know, 12, 24, multiple dozens of systems. That's why builders like Amari here exist. That's why other boutique builders exist for these sort of mid-level distribution order quantities of complex systems ranging from you know simple low embedded stuff all the way up to dual epics with terabytes of memory they'll do it and they'll do it in a way that's unique to your solution if you really want to do it that way 
So now we come up to the big boy, the Bugatti Veyron. And if it's a system you think is a bit familiar, that's because we've already tested one on this channel, or at least an older version. Uh, that was the X64T. This is the X64TP for Threadripper Pro. So when you guys first sent the X64T to me, two of the best features I thought in your custom design were that pop-out handles at the top, you know, because if you want to carry this big beast, you've got to have some way to hold it. Um, but also this really innovative liquid cooling system. Now I know in, in this system you've got, what, a 3120 here, but you support up to a 4140? It's got, yeah, so basically you can have the 420 AIO, um, or we do a full water loop, custom water loop that we've been developed with cooperation with EK. Um, and that was really developed for Threadripper, but obviously if you've got older lake or hotter processes to come, uh, we support a 420 by 65 mil deep radiator um, nice. and a custom water loop. So it can handle pretty much any processor up to about 550 watts. Is that all? 550 watts? <laughs> Well, we'll just revise the chassis and put a bigger radiator or two or something. <laughs> if we, if we need, need to. to. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, when, when, when those uh, Sapphire Rapids workstation <laughs> models come out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah. time for that. But also you've got support here for full extended EATX, but also a custom storage backplane, which I'll show you guys B-roll of it because it's right at the back here. Um, but basically breakout because these systems sometimes go into places where they need to be serviced. Yeah. So you've adjusted how the storage is delivered for serviceability. Yeah. I think you've got a couple of yeah, so things there. The, right now, the system has got uh, standard SATA SAS backplanes. These are our own backplane designs. For those customers that don't want U.2 PCI Express drives, actually want the M.2 drives in the drive bays for serviceability, we have that that plugs into that. So that then just plugs into the backplane and uh, Bob's your teapot. Now you've got uh, M.2 in your drive bay, so that means everything's accessible just by with a with a tool free um, drive. It's, so right now in this system, so the case is completely custom. Yeah. Uh, custom cooling in collaboration with EKWB. Uh, that's on the full water loop. This yeah. is a standard AIO. So we uh, yeah. 360 and 420 AIOs yeah. and 280s and 240s. And uh, I've noticed that for at least this customer, you've got 10 gig fiber <laughs> at the back. There's 10 gig fiber, and also I, uh, we've got the shipping brace. Now, this is all Magneto chassis have this, and it means that um, when we ship these with these very heavy GPUs, is that they actually arrive with the GPUs in the slot and not floating around inside the case. So, we develop all of our chassis. Uh, even those have got a GPU support bracket, the R80, R40, every single Magneto has a GPU support bracket for transit purposes. And all our boxes are double skinned, high MPE, so they supply international shipping. And this is the problem that, you know, if you're buying a, a gaming PC made workstation, uh, it will come in probably the box that it was manufactured in, which is only designed to take an empty case. It's not designed to take a case fully loaded with components. And when you put a one and a half kilo graphics card in it, um, and a courier happens to drop it off his van, yeah. that graphics card is no longer going to be uh, sat in its slot. Even if the slot is reinforced, the case probably won't survive. So we've developed that in all of our chassis so that these things can be shipped and actually get to the customer working. I was going to say, what, one, one GPU, this looks like it's the chassis for four GPUs. Uh, yes, this will take four blower fan GPUs, so it's, a, as you can see, it's more than a, an eight slot design. The, um, this motherboard actually has 90 degree I.O. at the bottom, right. so there's no conflict with having a GPU in the bottom slot. If I went and wanted a fully decked out Machine, high-end everything. Yeah. 20K and the rest? 
I guess it depends on how expensive the graphics. I mean, thirty ninety and the thirty ninety Ti's <laughs> come along; they're going to be quite expensive. <laughs> Prices change day to day, I guess. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, technically, uh, you could have four water cooled GPUs and a Threadripper Pro all water looped um, into that. But uh, yeah, for most customers, just having the CPU thermally managed with a Threadripper yeah. AIO, um, we have got a custom. Amari branded Threadripper AIO coming, but it's a bit late. Um, <laughs> supply chain issues. Uh, supply chain issues, and that will be coming out, and that will be very performant, um, and that will be coming towards summertime. So regardless if anybody wants one of the tiny systems we saw, perhaps for the commercial space, yeah. or for the high-end ones, or even for something in between, but they want something custom, yeah. how do they get in contact? Just go to the website. Um, new website we've got a new website we've got an appliances section so for customers who want to have their own so typical while filming right at the end of the day battery in the camera dies but i'd like to thank you all for watching and thanks to these guys dan and armari uh, for having me for the day to take through some of their custom designs and uh, stay tuned for that review of their uh, high-end vfx workstation thanks dan if you like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We also have now a private Discord server. And if you want access to that, become a Patreon member and it will instantly add you as long as your emails are linked. You can join the Patreon for as little as $1.50 a month and it all goes back into helping the channel. Thank you for your support.